and probably not what you would have expected clicking on off the grid, but let's try new things. Um, so welcome to Off the Grid. My name is Ryan, and as the original host Mitchell says, I said what I said, and I meant it, because it's true. <laughs> so today I am here with two fellow Baltimore City School students, and they are also on the student media team. Layla. Hi, my name is Layla. I'm from Baltimore Montessori Charter School, and I'm in eighth grade. And Nahomi. Hi, my name is Nahomi. I'm in ninth grade, and I go to Baltimore City College. And yeah, they're going to be co-hosts with me today. So, and I'm apologizing in advance because I'm really awkward and this is not normal. But, um,. What do you want to do in the future? Like within the next like five, maybe ten years? Okay, so I think in the next five years, I'll probably be starting university, college. So I would probably want to do something involved with pre law because I want to do something in law. So pre law before law school, I think. So do you want to be, like, a lawyer or... I think, yeah, okay. I most likely, but I don't know, like, what specific type because there are, like, a lot of different variations of being a lawyer, mm -hmm. I guess. What about you? Um, to be honest, I have no idea. Like, my interests are a little all over the place, but for the most part, like, if I had to pick now, I would probably be a writer because I love, like, writing. Like, I love creative writing. And things like that, so I don't know. I'll probably be starting college because I want to go to college, but I don't know what the future, what future lies ahead of me, so just hope it'll, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Um, for me personally, hopefully in the next, like, five years, I will be almost done college and almost done my tattoo apprenticeship because I would, like, be a tattoo artist. I've been working on building up a portfolio and stuff, so hopefully that's what the cards hold for me. I could definitely see that. For yeah. <laughs> the piercings give it away. Yeah. 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 I think it. So, has like, has, how have has your dreams changed since like, from a kid until now? Like, what did you want to be when you were a kid versus now? Um, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a ballerina firefighter. <laughs> I don't know where that idea came from, but I just thought it'd be cool to be like a multi, just do mul multiple things in general, I guess, for my career. But now, um, I, as I said before, I want to be a writer. But yeah, I want to be in some type of art form, to be honest. And like, kind of like Naomi said, like, maybe in law, but I'm not sure. I'm still kind of, like, I'm not in high school yet. Like, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do when I get older and, like, what I'm interested in and yeah, what I want to do. Yeah, still have a lot of fun. Yeah, because, like, I'm interested in too many things, so I'll have to choose eventually. But, yeah, that's my idea, like, so far. So, a ballerina firefighter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think like I definitely had like a more realistic type of job that I wanted to do because I wanted to be either a librarian or like a owner of a candy store. So for the candy store one, I think I would like to eat candy all day when I was younger. So I think that's like a big part of the reason why I wanted to own a candy shop and the librarian part. Because I believed that um, it would be easy to own a library so you can sit down and read books all day. But, um, yeah. Okay. Me personally, I wanted to be a veterinarian because I love animals. I still do. I have two cats that I absolutely adore. Oh. And, yeah, I wanted to be like this animal doctor. But then when I found out how many years of college... I would have to go through. I was like, mm, never mind. And I just recently was starting to like brush up on my art and stuff. So I think that's when I was like, okay, I could be like a tattoo artist. And plus, tattoo artists have like really 
like it's just so varied like you can do so yeah. much with it mm-hmm. so. so has like media ever impacted mm. how you feel about like your career choice well um i really think that um social media especially like tiktok they like to like romanticize certain like job fields like um the medical field with like Grey's Anatomy type of things yeah. like a lot of people want to be doctors now so I think like that's one way that social media has impacted the view on certain careers like for law I think like if you watch crime shows you will be like oh I want to do something in law I want to do something in crime so I think it like gives you a certain view on that job yeah I can heavily relate because I Growing up, I used to watch, like, Law and & Order and, like, Criminal right, Minds right. and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, I want to be a criminal profiler or, like, a lawyer or an attorney. And then I right. actually see what it takes to become that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm cut out for that. Right. So how has media affected yours? Um, I don't know if I would say it affected me personally because I've, I've just been, like, the same person. To be honest, like, I've always um, liked writing. But, like, to piggyback off what Naomi said... Um, I think for other people, it definitely has affected, like, a lot of people I know, like, um, oh, actually, when I was younger, like, for a while, um, I wanted to be a doctor for some weird reason, and because of Grey's Anatomy, like, my mom would watch it a lot, um, but as I got older, I realized I, I'm not even really interested in that type of stuff, so, yeah, I think it definitely influences it, but, yeah, that's all I really have on that topic, to be honest. Yeah, and, like, what did, like, talk about what you said about how, like, TikTok likes to romanticize a lot of careers? I've seen so many TikToks that it's, like, oh, day in the life of, like, a hospice nurse or, um, Mm -hmm. just a bunch of other careers, and they only really highlight the good parts about it, not, like, what they had to do to get there. And it's, like, people are, like, oh, I want to do that, and I'm, like, but what they're showing isn't, like, realistic right because even like the process of going into the career not only that but once you stick with the career you're most likely going to be spending time doing that career Mm. so like you really have to think and be careful before you choose the field of work that you want to go into right because then they'll get into it and they'll be like "Mm, it's not what i thought right right and that's a lot of like time that you could have put into something right yeah has like family or friends ever like affected how you like view a certain career or like what have like has it have they said anything that's kind of made you think like "Mm, maybe I shouldn't do it um I feel like not a specific career no but um because we haven't really like been talking about that but we probably will as I get um older not so yeah not really like my friend and stuff but a career in general yeah because it's kind of like a lot of pressure like having like wondering where I'm gonna end up like in like five or eight years and like just not really knowing what I want to do as I get older and how the years kind of are passing by really fast so I would say like getting a career in general they like my family my friends definitely have an influence on that so yeah I wouldn't say a specific career but having like getting a career in general and being successful Mm -hmm. that definitely they definitely have an influence on that Um, I think my family's always talked about, like, what type of career that you want to do, but it's not really pressure to be in a certain field. Like, Mm -hmm. I I think, like, coming from my family, like, doctor, um, working in, um, technology, stuff like that, like, that's, like, a preferred job, but I feel like, um, since I was little, um, I think, like, a path that I would most likely be into was law. Because um, I remember, like, arguing with my preschool (laughs) teacher, and she was like, this lady's going to be a lawyer when she grows up. And then, like, going into debate in third grade and, like, looking into um, certain problems in Baltimore City, like, vacant housing, et cetera, stuff like that. Like, I was like, oh, I enjoy doing this, and I enjoy debating with other people so and then also going to Baltimore City College where they had debate and a government class I was like oh I really want to do law so I think like I've chose a certain career path um not only because like I enjoy it but like if I stick with it I feel like if I'm consistent then I can make it work yeah and like what you said kind of leads into like 
something else I wanted to ask. Do you feel like your school prepares you enough for, like, the career you want? Um, weirdly enough, I feel like my elementary school probably prepared me more than my middle school does now because, like, my elementary school, it was a public county school, and the school I go to now is a city um, public charter school and a Montessori school as well. So, um, how Montessori works, it's, like, way different than any other school. And, like, even though I'm in middle school, I only have four different classes. We basically, like, the teacher basically takes us to our classes. And, yeah, like, a different subject every day. And it's kind of, like, the same as it would be, like, a, um, like, we're in elementary school, like, we're little mm -hmm. kids. So, mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm a middle schooler, to be honest. Like, I feel way younger than I am and like I feel like we're not really doing what we're supposed to do mm -hmm. um and it's like I also feel like we're learning a little less because we're in a class with like it's seventh and eighth and even though it's kind of split when they teach us it a lot of the classes like some of the classes teach us the same exact thing so it really just doesn't feel like it's preparing us for high school at all or like mm -hmm. most importantly like college so mm -hmm. I don't feel like it has a good impact yeah i can relate because um my school just recently started implementing ap classes yeah my school doesn't even have ap classes so like my composite score like i couldn't even get into certain schools because even though i have like i'm an ab student um my composite score couldn't have gotten even couldn't have even gotten any higher mm -hmm. because my school didn't have any ap classes i never even took one when i probably would be in one yeah mm -hmm. so yeah, they just started adding, like, AP classes, and it's just, I, and even though it's, like, a visual art school, as somebody who, like, wants to do art as, like, a career going forward, and the school I'm going to is, like, a visual art school, I feel like there really isn't a lot of, like, art-based things that they could do to really, like, set us up. I mean, like, yeah, they have, like, digital art and they have 2d art and then they have they just did ap art but i feel like as a visual art school i feel like they're lacking so much compared to like like baltimore school of arts like even yeah. though it's not like the same i feel like they could do more yeah like they, like it's a visual art school so it should be held to like some kind of standard yeah usually. yeah yeah but do you think your school prepares you? I mean, I think as of now, yes, because coming from a school that, like, didn't get much homework in elementary and middle, that, like, this school really piles up work, mm -hmm. and you literally have to, like, not procrastinate. <laughs> Um, or you're gonna like fall behind. Yeah, and then we have to take an AP class next year. For sophomore year, we have to take AP literature. So. It's a requirement? Yeah, it's a requirement. Okay. So, and we also have to take chem chemistry and physics to pick which one that we would like to take our last two years of high school. Really? So I feel like they're kind of moving at a fast pace, mm -hmm. but like once we get into college, it'll just be a bit more easier, especially. You'll be more used to it. Right. Because I feel like that they're with having, with well, maybe not piling up homework, but with having homework be something that's consistent because my school doesn't do homework at all. Uh -huh. Like, I really? I don't have homework. I, I'm kind of happy about it. But then again, it's like, I probably need homework. Mm -hmm. But I feel like in a way they are kind of preparing you for the future because right. they're like, you know, like in college, you're not just going to not give you homework. I think they just hold us to a certain standard, especially mm -hmm. since our school um, is an Ivy school, so we don't learn the same stuff as other schools at a certain time. We have this class called Government and Politics, which usually I think people take it in like 10th, 11th grade. Mm -hmm. And it's a really nice class. We get to have discussions about things in the government, and you really learn a lot. Uh, I feel like our school has a lot of work that we have to do so it overall just prepares us even though it's like a different standard compared to other baltimore city schools the ib um curriculum really does um make us feel prepared and i i tend to think about like kids who are at like say a school like mine or a school like layla's where it's like 
they want to do something in the future like say they want to do like nursing mm-hmm. and it's like the school doesn't provide them with a the information to possibly get into some type of nursing program or to learn about it mm-hmm. or b just have any type of like human anatomy class mm-hmm. like i feel like some schools don't have the stuff that they need to to prepare to, yeah to prepare kids right for because like i mean not everybody knows what they want to be. do at like six years old yeah but it's good to give them an idea so. yeah right be open to certain fields and i know that baltimore city has the like choice fair and stuff mm-hmm. following with the choice fair they um displayed a bunch of different types of career fields they um they showed a variety of different career fields, and mm-hmm. you could see, like, I think there was culinary, there's STEM, so you can really, like, apply to schools with yeah. your job interests, so I think that's, like, a good part of transitioning into high school, mm-hmm. so you're, like, more better prepared in a way. Yeah, and I like how they do that, because it shows them, like, you could do this over here, or you could do that over here, or mm-hmm. both schools have that same thing, so you could go to either one. It gives them, it broadens their horizons a lot. Right, right. Yeah. This generation, well, I don't know why I'm saying this generation, as if I'm not in <laughs> right. this generation, <laughs> but um, younger kids, they have a lot more, I don't want to say a lot more opportunities than, like, I had or you guys had, mm-hmm. but yeah. just, there's more knowledge, Oper- almost, because mm-hmm. it's like, when I was younger, we didn't have, like, career, fa- career fairs like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like now that they're exposing that in like middle and high school, I think it's good to let kids kind of like, you know, have some type of idea of what they want to do so they can like try out different things. And if they don't like it, then they could switch to something else. Right. So how do you think um, COVID has affected how you, (laughs) like, uh, like what you want to do as a career moving forward? Um... Or not even a career, just, like, future period. Um, I feel like for for your first question, like, for my career, I don't think it really affected that as much. But from COVID, like, being away from so many people and, like, even though we still had work, like, mm-hmm. a lot of people didn't do it. And it was kind of, like, optional um, or whatever. And it was, like, more easy to get away with things and, like, you weren't really able to see people. I feel like it definitely um, taught me to... um, Like, appreciate school in a way? Like, school life, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, actually getting out, being in the school building. Right. You might not, like, enjoy the classes that you take right now, or but, like, the experience of, like, being with your friends, mm-hmm. walking from class to class, I think, like, that's something that we all miss doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because... Online school, yeah. Was, oh, my God. It was... I hated it. It I, was... I hope we never have to do that yeah. again. It was, it was just so bad, because I feel like I really didn't learn anything. Yeah. And I felt like... Right, and it was almost like just, like, hitting a wall. Like, yeah. the information was there, and we were hearing it, but it wasn't registering. I think it, like... Yeah, especially because I was in a new uh-huh. school, so I didn't even know anyone on the mm-hmm. Zoom call, and I was just, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> really awkward. Yeah, as what um, what she said, uh, school did feel optional. Like, there were some times where I wouldn't even go into the Zoom call, right. just do a little bit of work, and then go back to sleep. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, the experience of, like, going to school, especially, like, the year after, like, last school year, Mm -hmm. that was, like, I feel like I enjoyed eighth grade more due to that experience. Yeah. So, I feel like as a, like, as a whole, COVID didn't really affect my job, like, the job that I wanted to do, but I thought of, like, I was thinking, like, oh, what if I want to do something else later on? Should I really be, like, so dedicated to one career field? Mm Mm-hmm. I think for me, because it's like, because tattooing, I'm going to be, like, up close and personal with somebody. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and what I've learned from the pandemic, a lot of people don't want to say they have COVID. Or they're like, Mm -hmm. oh, no, it's just a cold. And then they're, like, hacking up a lung. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, that's probably COVID. I want to get tested. 
but it makes me think a little bit and about how if I want to get my own studio I need to have certain health measures because like you have to get tested at least 48 hours before you have to wear a mask and I've seen a lot of tattoo artists do that where they have like even though the even though we're not I mean we're still in the pandemic but even though it's gotten like the threat has love has gotten lower yeah. they still have really strict regulations because right. of how close how close contact you are with someone yeah and i feel like they kind of need them because it's like ev- ever since like after quarantine and like after covid has kind of like simmered down a little bit i feel like everyone kind of just forgot covid existed yeah right. and it's like they're like oh yeah i just have a cold or like they'll go to school even though they have covid mm-hmm. and like put um uh, right, so I feel right. like it's really important to have those restrictions if you're going to be like a tattoo artist, like you said. Mm-hmm. And I think the thing with COVID is just, I think it's just changed Yeah. everything. Like, uh, like when someone says they, ha- they have COVID now, like, I don't initially feel that heart drop anymore. Right. Like, I remember in 2020, like, I want to say March, mm-hmm. someone's like, oh my God, I got COVID. And That's I'm like, like stop. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you don't. Like, I was scared, but now someone's like, oh, I got COVID. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, just, you know, stay inside. Have some vitamin C. Because I got COVID in, um, hold on, it was like, it was June of 2022. That's I know, I didn't get COVID 2020, 2021, but 2022, that was my time. Yeah, I think, like, I got COVID, like, winter break of last school year. Mm-hmm. So I went to 2022 with, uh, with COVID. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that was, like, an experience, but, like, getting the vaccine really helped, I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah, I, because mine was really, really bad. Like, my chest was hurting. Mm-hmm. I was, like, really weak. Like, it was really right. bad. And I, But I feel like if I didn't have the vaccine, it probably would have been a lot right. worse. Right, right, right. And because I took those precautions. Yeah. But have you ever gotten COVID? Yeah, I got it two times last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I got it, uh, like, in... February 2022, I think, and then I got it, not super recently, but, like, November 20, November of last year, so, Mm -hmm. yeah, and both of my times, like, it was so weird, because, like, when I first had it in February, it, like, I didn't even feel like I had it at all, Mm -hmm. and then, all of a sudden, when I had COVID, um, in November of last year, I was, like, coughing, I was sneezing, you actually felt sick, yeah, I didn't want to get out of bed, like, I don't know what happened, but right. some different variants yeah. to just right. But um, yeah, COVID really made me think about like I need to start taking more precautions, especially because, like I said, I'll be working in close contact with people, and me and my sisters use this idiom all the time. They're like, if COVID COVID was like a zombie apocalypse, like. Over half, like sixty-five percent of people, mm-hmm. wouldn't say they got bitten, and would put yeah. everybody else at risk mm-hmm. and bite everybody else. Yeah. Okay. That that metaphor makes a lot yeah, of sense. Yeah. Yeah. But it's because some people they like, they just don't care, or they're just like, oh no, I don't have it. It's just a cold or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then they put not only me, but anyone else who's in the studio, and right. my family at risk. Right. So it's like. I gotta be able to put those precautions up. Especially, like, people with health issues, uh, mm-hmm. older people. You really have to be careful. Yeah. Yeah, I think people forget about that because it's, like, even if you were, like, oh, no, it's fine. If you get COVID, you won't die or whatever. Like, just because I don't have health issues, like, think about the people at my house. Like, I could have elders at my house. Mm-hmm. Like, my grandpa uh-huh. died of COVID, so mm-hmm. it's really serious. Right, right. right. Some people are just, like, oh, like, no, you won't die. You'll be fine. But it's, like... Mm, I still don't want to be sick. Yeah, and you can right. pass on to people who, um, who it is a danger mm-hmm. to, so. Yeah. Right. So, I want to talk more about, is ballerina firefighter? Because <laughs> um, I, I've been trying to think about it. it is it like, I'm going to let you explain it. Um, so when I was younger, like, this was really young. This was when I was like, four or five um I would dance but I only danced for like two years because I quit because of, I went to each year mm-hmm. um well, I mean, they're so kind of in the same not the same but like kind of similar yeah <laughs> kind of similar yeah. sisters they're in the same bowl I guess yeah but, mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah, so I guess that's where the ballerina came from. And the firefighter, I don't know. I think I just, I probably just saw it on a TV show, and, like, it was a firefighter saying a cat, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I want to do that. <laughs> See, <don't> the media. <laughs> yeah. They got you when you were young. Okay. So, do you guys have, like, any advice you would give to somebody who's, you know, who's not, like, really sure, or anybody who's just younger who is still trying to figure out their career? Hmm. I think, like, interest is a big part of, like, a career choice. Like, you know how you said you were interested in art and you pick something like tattooing? Yeah, I think, like, if you're going to pick a career, it might as well be something you enjoy. But, like, as you get older, adults start saying, like, oh, you should probably do something that will make a lot of money. So, like, I would say be practical, but at the same time, don't be afraid to do something that you're really interested in. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, I would say from my personal experience, get involved with like, or at least try to um, kind of take a dip into a lot of different um, options. Like for careers in the future, like try to get involved in as many things as you can. Um, like I'm not saying bombard yourself with a bunch of like things you can't manage, but um, try to like get involved with as many things as you can to see what you like. Because I feel like it makes it easier because when you get older, at least you have, like, an idea right. of what you want to do as you um, transition outside of high school and things like that. So you at least have an idea and it's not like, oh, I have no idea what to do and stuff. And so you actually do something you're interested in and at least know a little bit about it before you go into it. So I yeah. would say, like, it's good to start start young, yeah. I would say. Yeah. See, I would kind of say the opposite almost because it's like mm. you're young have time <laughs> it's like like say like if they're in elementary or middle school it's like you don't have to know immediately because yeah. I, mean, I really didn't even know until like junior year so it's like you still have all that time but also you want to think about your interests things that you like to do like you said try some stuff out and you know don't just pick something because people are like oh that makes the most money or oh you'll be the most successful doing that no yeah. choose something that you feel extremely passionate about because mm -hmm. otherwise you're just going to work hating it and nobody <laughs> wants to do that right? yeah i know a lot of adults who are like mm, i have to go to this nine to five job i hate every day yeah <laughs> like, it's like i don't want I don't, I don't, I don't to live like that and i don't think anybody else will want to live like that solely right? just for like money or because that's what other people expect from you yeah right. but also like I talked to my mom a little bit about this and she was like um it's good to definitely like go for what you're passionate about but sometimes like to get there you kind of have to start with a job you may not like mm -hmm. just right. to like get that started or like you know get some money and like maybe save to save up for whatever career right. to be prepared for whatever career right. you want to go into so yeah all right, everyone. That was a great conversation. Yep. It was a yeah. great conversation. I really enjoyed it. So did I. For more information, you can go to www.baltimorecityschools.org and subscribe to us on YouTube at City Schools TV. Once again, I am your host, Ryan, with Layla and Nahomi. Yep. And we'll see you guys.